Thousands of people come to the Johnson Space Center here in Houston every week to look at some of the rockets and equipment developed in the 1960s for NASA missions. For many people, those were the glory years when the Apollo astronauts walked on the moon. But John Connolly, who works with the new Lunar Project, also sees great things ahead. There's a new generation of engineers and scientists now at NASA who are eager to get back to the moon to find out a lot of those things that Apollo uncovered and, uh, and that now we're able to finally get back to the moon to explore. Engines are firing and tests already underway for the new Ares rockets that NASA plans to use in its Constellation program, which involves returning to the moon within 10 years to establish manned bases. John Connolly says study of material brought back from the moon's surface four decades ago shows the availability of oxygen that perhaps can be extracted from the rocks. If you could make all of the oxygen that you needed at a place like the moon and not have to bring it all the way from Earth, you cut by a factor of 80% the mass of stuff you have to bring with you in order to survive in space. But such plans, ambitious as they are, disappoint many space enthusiasts, including the second man to walk on the moon in the Apollo 11 mission, Buzz Aldrin. He's skeptical of a plan that will take another decade only to get the United States back to where it was 40 years ago. Surely there's something not quite right. Maybe we are implementing this wonderful vision in not so uh, smart a way. Others are critical of NASA's plan to abandon the space shuttle next year to concentrate all of the agency's efforts on the new program. Economists wonder whether NASA is up to the challenge of returning to the moon at a time when the U.S. budget deficit is at record levels. Chris Brock, a technology analyst at Rice University, and Troy Gaddis, a computer systems architect with Houston's Open Team software company, recently wrote an essay in the Houston Chronicle newspaper suggesting that NASA needs to be more like a private company. Chris Brock says government funding might fall short in the years ahead. When you look at the, uh, the manned space mission goals, you know, getting back to the moon, getting to Mars, uh, there's a mandate there that doesn't equate to the resources that are already provided. The answer, says Gaddis, is innovation. Given the realistic government budgets going forward, if NASA is going to accomplish these great inspirational things, they are going to need this level of innovation that makes space travel become cheaper, easier, faster on a regular basis. NASA officials say they're aware of the budget restraints. John Connolly says the agency is carrying out the mandates from the President and U.S. Congress, relying on technical experts from around the world. It starts internally at NASA. Uh, we have a lot of people who are real smart thinking about this and who have thought about it for many, many years, like myself. And uh, so that's where it starts, and, uh, but it quickly uh, grows to be, uh, uh, to be a, a project where we get the inputs of lots and lots of smart people out there. NASA hopes to do a manned test of the Orion launch vehicle by 2015 with the goal of sending a mission to the moon by 2020. Greg Flakus, VOA News, Houston.